Good day, everyone, and welcome to the CSPI Fiscal 2020 Third Quarter Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, you will have the opportunity to ask questions. Please note that this call is being recorded. And now, it is my pleasure to turn the conference over to Mr. Doug Sherk with EVC Group. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Operator. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us to review CSP Inc.'s Fiscal third quarter ended June 30th, 2020. With me on the call today is Victor Delovo, CSPI's Chief Executive Officer, and Gary Levine, CSPI's Chief Financial Officer. After Victor and Gary conclude their opening remarks, we will then open the call for questions. Statements made by CSP Inc.'s management on today's call regarding the company's business that are not historical facts may be forward-looking statements as the term is identified in federal securities laws. The words may, will, expect, believe, anticipate, project, plan, intend, estimate, and continue, as well as similar expressions, are intended to identify forward-looking statements. Forward-looking statements should not be read as a guarantee of future performance or results. The company cautions you that these statements reflect current ex expectations about the company's future performance or events and are subject to a number of uncertainties, risk, and other influences, many of which are beyond the company's control then they influence the accuracy of the statements and the projections upon which the segment and statements are based. Factors that may affect the company's results include, but are not limited to, the risk and uncertainties discussed in the risk factors sections of the annual report on Form 10-K and the quarterly report on Form 10-Q filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Forward-looking statements are based on the information available at the time those statements are made and management's good faith belief as of the time with respect to the future events. All forward-looking statements are qualified in their entirety by this cautionary statement, and CSP Inc. undertakes no obligation to publicly revise or update any forward-looking statements, which is a result of due information, future events, or otherwise after the date, excuse me, whether as a result of due information, future events, or otherwise after the date thereof. With that, I'll turn the call over to Victor DeLovo, Chief Executive Officer. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge the impact of the coronavirus pandemic and express our heartfelt concern to those who have been affected. Since we last talked with you in May, our team has continued to adjust how we operate the business to maximize our opportunities in a manner that is safe for both our employees and our customers. We have been able to maintain most of our workforce executing for our clients and more than 90% of the team is working remotely. We are now several months into the new normal, and despite limiting our ability to visit our customers and potential customers, we continue to build our pipeline in all lines of our business. Total revenue for the fiscal third quarter was $13.5 million compared to $21.6 million we reported in the same period of fiscal 2019. While the year over year revenue decline was primarily related to COVID-19 pandemic, our decision to also transition our business to higher margin products and services enabled us to significantly improve our gross margin. I believe this achievement demonstrates the soundness of our execution of our profitable growth plan. Further, during this transition, our prospects remain quite high. And if nothing else, the su suddenness of the COVID-19 pandemic and unprecedented of remote working environments is helping to highlight network vulnerabilities. Businesses, both large and small, remain exposed to increased threats, and there have been several well-publicized ransomware attacks. I believe this fear, in addition to providing a secure remote work, working environment, is a growing concern for many businesses. It is critical that the businesses have a partner that understands the complex challenge, challenges. We are positioning CSPI to be that partner as our newest solutions are in our Unified Communication as a Service, or UCAS, seem ready-made ready for today's critical network issues. For the quarter, our technology solution, or TS, rev <clears throat> or TS revenue was $11.9 million. While the TS division was impacted by COVID-19, we were able to generate most of our revenue from our large customers. Our managed service practice, or MSP, continues to perform well as we sign new customers during the quarter, which include cloud business and UCAS. Importantly, we have not lost a single customer as they value the service we are providing. This stickiness demonstrates our importance 
to our customers, even during these unprecedented times. I believe that the three lines of recurring revenue business we created continues to bring stability to CSPI. Separately, the cruise ship industry remains one of the most COVID-19 impacted industries. When we spoke in May, many operators were looking to resume cruise during the summer months. However, in June, the Cruise Lines International Association, or CLIA, announced that the association ocean-going cruise line members will voluntarily extend the suspension of the cruise operations from the U.S. ports until mid-September 2020. However, some cruise operators have a plan to restart in the EU ports in the coming weeks. While the continued travel restrictions hamper the ability to gain access to the ships, we continue to communicate with the operators every other week, and we are prepared to move on a moment's notice. On the positive side, these upgrades need to occur, and the operators have already purchased the equipment, so we would expect these ships to be prioritized when business resumes. As we have consistently reported over the past few quarters, our Microsoft practice continues to perform well, and this latest quarter was no exception. We are in a month through Q4, so I'm reaffirming our belief that we will achieve a greater growth rate for the business compared to a full-year growth rate of 140% we achieved in 2019. Regarding our UCAS offering, an all-in-one service for hard and soft phones, including 24 by 7 security and technical support with the redundant data centers both in Florida and Texas. As, I, <clears throat> as a reminder, UCAS market size is expected to grow from $15.8 billion in 2019 to $24.8 billion by 2024. Being driven by growing trends towards mobility and bring your own device or BYOD to the workplace. During the quarter, we continue to have success as we added new customers and expanded sites at our current customers. All while continue to increase the number of virtual product demonstrations we are performing on a weekly basis. The new business pipeline is promising and the team is engaged with prospects and is maintaining constant communication. Now I will move to our high performance products or HPP division. Revenue for the quarter was $1.6 million, in line with our estimates and reflects revenue from our legacy business, being offset by the expected decline in the Americom business. ARIA, our award-winning next-generation cybersecurity platform that helps organizations protect themselves from harmful hidden attacks without human intervention, is continuing to garner tremendous interest in customer success as we recently completed an installation for an international customer. Further, we continue to be well positioned within a leading cable company and other OEMs opportunities for ARIA. I believe the testimony along with the industry acknowledgement and robust lead flow we are generating from virtual trade shows will drive future sales in the HVP division. Additionally, we are now ha have six partners for our official channel program and we are speaking with several others to ensure a robust channel program. To summarize, the CSPI team is performing well and remain focused during the unprecedented times. We have ma made and will continue to make necessary adjustments to our operations to ensure business execution. Specifically, our new ARIA and UCAS offerings are generating the expected interest as we sign up new customers and broadening our pipeline. We have a diverse customer base, both large and small, and this breadth will allow us to successfully navigate the near-term uncertainty. We are excited about our long-term growth prospects. With that, I will now ask Gary to provide a brief overview on the fiscal third quarter financial performance. Thanks, Victor. As Victor mentioned in his opening remarks, our third quarter revenues were $13.5 million compared to $21.6 million in the year ago third quarter and reflects our pursuit of higher margin business. We reported gross profits of $4.2 million compared to last year's third quarter profit of $4.8 million, resulting in a gross profit of 31.2% compared to the year-ago gross profit of 22.4, an improvement of 9%. Our engineering and development expenses for the third quarter was $693,000 compared to 583,000 in the year ago quarter. In the prior year quarter, we received a refund of $150,000 from a consulting cost 
for a project that wasn't completed. Our SG&A expenses in the quarter were $3.9 million, slightly decreased from $4.1 million in last year's fiscal Q3 due to a decrease in variable compensation costs. We, repeated, we reported a loss before income of $200,000 in Q3 compared to income before income taxes of $206,000 in the prior year third quarter. During the quarter, we had income tax expense of $10,000. The prior year quarter had a tax benefit of $326,000. In early April, when it became evident that the COVID-19 would have a severe economic impact, we took several actions to improve our cash flow, including the, suspen the suspension of our quarterly dividend, stopped our stock buyback program, and applied for and received a PPP loan. These actions at the end of, the, of June strengthened our cash position by approximately $3 million. We ended the third quarter with cash and short-term investments of $20 million, which includes cash of $10 million in the UK, and we have a pension liability of $5.2 million. Our actions are designed to ensure that we continue to drive our bottom line performance and boost sales of our higher margin products. With that, I will turn it over to the operator to take your questions. Thank you, and at this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. You may withdraw your question at any time by pressing the pound key. Once again, that is star and one. And we'll take our first question from Joseph Nurses with Seagreen Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. How are you today? Hi, good, Joe. Joe. Uh, just a, a couple quick questions. Um, from the last conference call, we were talking about um, uh, proof of concept demos that you were at least attempting to do with the customers on this area uh, product line. W What's the status of that? Have we been able to get access at all to some of these customer sites? Not yet, Joe. Not yet? Not yet. Okay. No, so, that... so we have a backlog of um, – we should have a backlog of, uh, of proof of concept demos out there. I assume that we've been – have we've been doing we've been doing the virtual or? ones, and we've been trying to do you know like a try and buy where they actually you know give us a purchase order stuff like that. That's what we're offering. Um, yeah. You know, they want to see it. They want to you know they want to see it working. See it work. Yeah, exactly. And we haven't been able to get on site. You know, most of our customers still have you know unless you work there, you're not allowed you know to be on the okay. facilities. Okay, but. Um, the last again in the last conference call, you were saying you were doing you were doing demos. Mm -hmm. uh, so I assume you were able to do some sort of a demo absent the proof of concept. Uh, we're doing demos. We're doing three to five demos a week, okay. you know, consistently. Um, but getting it to the next level of the proof of concept is what's kind of slowing things down at this this stage. Okay, and I, so I have to assume that in the last three months <clears throat> you've had quite a few. Uh, Virtual demos, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. uh, on that, and, and it's a matter of getting, and we, and so we have not been able to get the most customer sites at all. Is that what you're saying? Okay. On the uh, UCAS uh, offering, I see you. We we've signed a couple of customers out with UCAS. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um Have we? Uh, are most of the customers that we're getting there? Are, I take it. Are they taking the standard product, or are we doing modifications like you? Had indicated some conference calls ago. No, are we are we modifying it to the customer specification, the Cisco? I would say fifty-fifty, oh. Joe. Okay, and I guess my question is: Are we are we competitive uh, uh, versus, let's say, the Ring Centrals uh, uh, of the world? Because uh, they're out there doing the same thing, right? P pretty much is uh, is that Cisco product line uh, with the platform that we're utilizing? Um, very competitive in the in the market. I would say, Joe, if you go look on this, like three buckets that they sell into, like a higher end, you know, line where you get the WebEx and everything that goes along with that, and then there's a middle, the two middle tiers were very competitive 
um, yeah. not a problem. If it's just a ringtone, it's probably not our, you know, bag of, you know, they're not customers that we're, we're really interested in. You know, if they're trying to do like $4 a month or something very, very inexpensive per user, that's not where we're trying to, uh, you know, go after. Okay. And um, so uh, you did indicate again that we still are in contact with the cable company. Um, I, I'm assuming we haven't been able to do much because of the whole COVID situation. A lot of, a lot of communications, just things have been – just slowing down. Yeah, we do have, you know, if not weekly, every other week conversations, um, you know, but things got pushed out a few months due to their uncertainty of how they want to move forward. Okay. And one one other thing uh, on the, uh, we are, we're finally, with technology solutions are, is finally offering um, our vital MDR advantage, which will incorporate the area platform. Um, and I'm just wondering, uh, you know, <clears throat> this, this is a perfect platform to uh, obviously for any of the managed security service providers. Have we been able to garner some interest in that uh, through, through Technology Solutions Group? Well, the Technology Solution here is offering it part of the managed service now. Right. Um, so that has been, you know, integrated in the Salesforce is working dig- diligently, you know, to provide opportunities for that. And then we're also talking to other um, MSPs on the area side that they're discussing direct that they may want to use our platform as their, you know, SIM. But I'm assuming the same problem exists with Technology Solutions Group, and that is that is they don't have access, they can't get access to the customer sites either uh, if, if they're interested in following through on the, with this platform. Exactly. Uh, we just have some stronger long-term relationships that we could kind of, you know, try. We're trying to push them to, to, you know, yes. Just say, I, hey, I, believe I, in us. You know, you trust us for the last ten years. You know, we know this is going to work. So those are the conversations that we're trying to push on the the TS side a little bit faster, and you know, than we would normally on a brand new customer that may not know, you know, CSPI or Aria. Okay. Um, how about any E2D royalties in this particular quarter or expected in the next quarter? There will be there in some the current – this current quarter, Joe, we're going to have uh, royalties, and we had a few in the last quarter. Going into next year, we, we just have to see how they fall out because what's happened over the last few years is they don't get the product out, and it trickles into the first quarter of the school year. To see how they they when they build the boards. Basically, we had a little bit of discord. In the current quarter, we just reported. In the, yeah, Q3. Yes, it was. And we are expecting a little bit more in the, in the fourth quarter. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we just don't know how it's going to fall next year. Correct. Well, we know we're going to have royalties. We just don't know the timetable for the royalties to come in next year. Okay. All right. Very good. That's about all I have. Our R&D expenses, you said, around 693000 for the quarter. So, again, uh, we would have been, you know, obviously, uh, absent the R&D, we would have been profitable, essentially. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Uh, you know, yep. uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully we can – Get through over this pandemic and move forward with uh, with certainly some of the new offerings. Thanks a lot, yeah. guys. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Bye. And we'll take our next question from Jonathan Honig with Compound Partners. Please go ahead. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. And thank thank you for doing what you're doing. You know, uh, I represent an individual and a group which is, uh, I believe, the largest shareholder in, in the company and. We're extremely bullish about what you're doing. Uh, the technology is there. The innovation is there. The management is there. Uh, and uh, the story is – and, and, and the, we believe the valuation to be really compelling, uh, you know, especially when compared to so many names in, in your group. You know, how can, how can we – how can the story be best put out to let people know – what the potential is here, uh, especially given the market. Could you speak to the size of the market for CSPI and, 
you know, uh, how we can kind of help people to understand that this isn't a, a sleepy value opportunity. This is a growth company in the cybersecurity space that uh, is trading at a massive discount, in my opinion. Well, I think that uh, there's there's a few things that we're doing behind the scenes. We've got uh, a new uh, IR firm that we've hired and working with them so that we're trying to get in front of uh, more potential shareholders to get our message out. We're also continuing to, uh, you know, at least trying to put the word out about the product itself. We're still competing in certain uh, issues so that we get notified, I mean, noticed by uh, uh, different people in the media and trying to get more there, as well as um, we're being very proactive on, uh, you know, the channel to get uh, people there from the customer standpoint. But we really have to look at uh, getting our message out more and more. We think you're correct in that. Uh, and I know Victor is uh, trying to get more things going on on the IR front. Yeah. And, you know, I, I completely agree with you in the, in the segment that, you know, we're competing with, um, you know, s- s- some of the competitors. You know, they've been doing it, you know, maybe a little longer than we have. But if you really look at the technology, you know, they do peace points where, you know, we feel – that we're covering, you know, 70 to 80% of the overall security, you know, we can cover with both the ARIA products that, that we currently have. So, uh, you know, I, we, I definitely think we're undervalued. You know, we need a few more customers, you know, to build up a little bit more of a reputation that, you know, you could go to some of the, you know, the players that covered Garden, the Foresters, and, and try to get them, to, to, you know, to cover it. But, you know, I put our product against any of the, you know, the other products that are out there that you see on, you know, national TVs, commercials and stuff like that, that are out there. But, you know, they've been doing it a a little bit longer and, uh, you know, definitely a lot bigger, you know, at this, at this stage. So, but competitive, you know, on product wise, I definitely put us against their product any day. Thank thank you, Victor. And thank you for the relationships that I know you're building and I want to dominate the call, but I'll ask very briefly too. Can you speak a little bit to the, because I think it, Think of CSPI as an undervalued small cap that has relationships with some of the largest large caps. Can you briefly speak to a couple of the companies that you're working with that you hope to work with that uh, you know are, are, are among the well-known, most well-known in their spaces? I can tell you we're in the financial institutions. You know, I, I'd rather not specifically mention the customers, you know, names without their permission, but we're in the, the, the largest, the large, you know, uh, financial institutions that, you know, we currently talk to. And it, the verticals are all over. You know, banking and healthcare are the two verticals we really started focusing on. You know, I think in, in even in this pandemic type of environment, you know, they do have money that they have to to spend in security, you know, to protect, you know, whether it's clients' information, both on the financial or on the, you know, HIPAA and, and healthcare. So those are two verticals that we've concentrated on. And, you know, we're talking to, like I said, the, you know, the largest cable companies that are out there also that we're, we're talking to right now. So, you know, of course, there's always competition, but I think once we were able to, to get the product in there and show how it works, we'll have a, you know, a good chance of earning their business. That's awesome. I mean, pre, before the pandemic, interestingly, uh, CSBI traded very closely with the cybersecurity ETF. Uh, it has recovered quite dramatically, uh, CSBI obviously to a lesser extent. So mm-hmm. we're bullish and we really believe in what you're doing. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's why we think the company is undervalued and continue to hold. Thank you again. Well, okay. thanks for your Thank support. You. And just as a reminder, that is star and one for your questions today. Star and one. And we'll go next to Brett Davidson, a private investor. Please go ahead. Hi, guys. I, uh, Hi, hey, Brett. Brett. I'm following up to, to Joe here. Joe had some fast questions. I got some slow ones. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so you guys made reference, Victor, in, in your comments, you made reference to, to growth, and I didn't catch all of it. I was wondering if you could just just touch on that again. In relation um, to? To the prior year? 
I, I wasn't sure if it was where we were going to end up this year. Oh, I was saying the growth was just on the Microsoft piece of it, the Office 365. We had a good growth rate on the our cloud business. That's what I was referring Got to. Got it. All right. Um, uh, there was a, a new customer installation you, you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I believe it was the, the UCAS. And did that revenue, is, did that any of that drop in the last quarter, or is, or is that all going forward? Well, we've had we've had new customers in both UCAS MSP over the quarter. We also had you know the the an installation of the Aria product. It was an international customer that was installed, and it, it wasn't you know large, but it, we did book it um, you know last quarter. So, and and the UCAS. I mean, was that through, throughout the quarter, last quarter, or was well, that, the know, UCAS is a, is quarter? a recurring. Everything we're doing right now, and yeah. I, and I, I I don't know if you caught it. There's three business lines that we're trying to do is a recurring revenue model. Yeah. So whether it's you know even Aria can be as a recurring revenue model on a on a monthly basis. You have the UCAS on a recurring revenue model basis. Usually the three year contracts, and then you know so between UCAS. Potentially, ARIA can be sold just bought or month, you know, recurring revenue. And then you have the MSP, the managed service practice, which are all um, recurring revenue models. So yeah, you, we would trying, recognize so, revenue as we, you know, over the, you know, the period of three years. So, I mean, the, the prior quarter was such a disruption. I'm just having a hard time figuring out, you know, exactly what's going on inside the business. I'm, I'm just trying to get an idea whether that was late in the quarter or, you know, during the, the course of the quarter or, or how that's going to, you know, impact revenues going forward. So, I mean, if it was the last week of the quarter and you guys booked some revenue, well, obviously it's, you know, not representative of what this quarter will look like. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, can, can you comment on that at all? or is? Well, I think throughout the quarter we had some ups and downs, as many other companies did. Uh, we didn't, and, you know, certain months were stronger than other, but the trends were that the customers were, were purchasing. So at some times with a buying product, you're getting the whole product more, but the reoccurring revenue is the ones that uh, were getting, you know, the new stuff. And that's was uh, sort of uh, spread throughout the, the quarter that uh, different things came on board. So, so, you know, so, so it's difficult to answer your question because what happens is you could have a four hundred thousand dollar contract that's spread out over three years. You could have a million dollar contract. So you're not gonna see huge, you know, swings, you know, every month you're hoping you just keep increasing it. But then there's been a lot you know, some large purchases from some of our financial institutions that, you know, towards you know, throughout the whole quarter spend millions of dollars, you know, um, at a time. So there's a combination of again, what Gary's saying is you got just purchase orders of just selling product, delivering it, and you're done. And then um and then you have the you know the recurring revenue, which it happens throughout the whole quarter, you know. Right. And if it's at the end of the you, you know, towards the quarter, you're not gonna get any of it until you know the more than likely if we sign it the last week, we're not gonna bill until the following mo month. Yeah, and that's just what I'm trying to get a handle on is, you know, how 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 is this distributed? So, you know, if if this was distributed evenly over the quarter, you'd have, you know, about a month and yeah. a half total rotation in the quarter. Yeah, so, I mean, not. if all this activity was spread out evenly, it's going to be a little different than if, you know, the majority of it was in the, the final month of the quarter. As soon as we can so, gain the business, Brett, we book it, you know. We, oh, we, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just trying to get a handle on, on when this is coming, how, how it's going to impact this, you know, upcoming coming quarter. Now that that's going to be recognized for, you know, three months worth instead of yeah. one month or one and a half or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, so you guys did book revenue from the the UCAS in the quarter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Press releases. I know in a prior prior call you talked about issuing press releases, and looks like that's been dislocated uh, by by the COVID thing to some extent. Um, how do you see that going forward in the next quarter or two? I mean, do you 
anticipate, you know, a flurry of press releases coming or, or nothing that you, you know, can, can really put your finger on at this point. Nothing right this second. You know, we have to just see how things roll out. This is still a lot of uncertainty, as you know, in the whole industry. So, you know, right now we've just got to heads down trying to focus on, you know, the new products and just trying to, you know, um, prospect with customers in a in a time where, you know, customers are uh, just trying to figure out what their business looks like. So it's one of those balancing acts to, you know, push as hard as you can without, upsetting the the uh, potential customers. So as soon as we have some press releases that that are worthy, we'll uh we'll get them back out. So do do you guys do you have any internal metrics that you guys use to to give you an idea of, you know, what revenues might possibly look at? I don't believe you you have any backlog. You guys don't track anything like backlog, do you? Yes, we do. We oh, you do, do that, and we monitor backlog. the pipe. I mean, we do all the the metrics, but obviously we don't report that. But we have a, a lot of internal data that we do monitor, and you know, keep a pulse of what the business is doing and how we're doing. So we have uh, many meetings going through those within all the operations of the company. Can you just give an idea what some of those things that you guys are actively monitoring? Well, obviously pipeline, backlog, um, and items, you know, related to the sales metrics, as well as the engineering schedules. And uh, those kind of things are what we monitor very closely and watch that, as well as we're always uh, maintaining and watching the quality of our products going out the door. And, and I mean, how do you, how do you guys, you know, how, how do you quantify pipeline? Are, are you looking at the number of customers you contacted, the potential Contract size. I mean, what, what is it exactly that you're monitoring? No, it's you look at when you're prospecting. You know, you start off at 20%, 40, 60, 80, in, in close rate, and then you see, you know, as you move through the pipeline of what's moving ahead or behind what you lost, and that's kind of how you manage against it. You know, and then you you, you review it with your sales individuals and based on co communication with vendors or customers you can figure out how you move it up you know up or down you know and and then you know you always you, things move right you know things that were 80 percent we thought close ratio you know got put on hold not not canceled just on hold so you bring that back down to 40 or 60 or however you want to do it and that's how we we manage it and then we have sales meetings and reviews with the salespeople every week, you know, and they go over their pipeline and that new opportunities. And then we have other meetings where we have our project managers on the phone with the lead end, you know, head of engineering. And we go through all the, uh, you know, all the business that's either, you know, new SOWs that went out the door to customers or current SOWs that have already been signed and rollouts and where we are in the projects. And uh, when we expect to close them so we can actually, you know, recognize revenue. And that's, you know, those are things, that's everyday business that we, we do. And, uh, you know, I'd imagine in, in March that might not have been a real favorable looking thing, but uh, has that generally recovered during the, the course of the, the summer here? No, it's uh, it's up and down. Some customers are better than others, and it's it's a it's a mixed match of you know it's just constant communication. You know, May honestly was the one the one month that hit us you know the toughest. You know, I yeah. think we had enough backlog. You know, for March everybody just got shocked, but you know business was already there. April I think there was enough backlog, and you know for us May was the month that the breaks went on and then June in, you know, kind of picked back up to where, you know, so it was it, at least some normality, but not, not back to where it was, but you know, at least yeah. people are talking now. So, so you guys kind of like touch bottom in May and things are kind of pushing back in the other direction now. Yeah. yeah they're, they're significantly better than, yeah. than they were in May. Got it. So, and, you know, last thing on my slow questions here is uh, maybe you could just give a little color on what the current thinking is on the dividend. 
Well, I think one of the important things for us is to get <clears throat> profitability first uh, as a company, and then we will take a, a good close look at it because the cash requirements, if we're losing money, is such that we just can't really do it. But we're certainly looking at that and discussing it every quarter with our board. And I just Got think, it. you know, the, the economy is just still too uncertain to, to, you know, even make that, you know, if this is something that, you know, you read, you know, something this morning that, you know, they have a vaccine, you know, who, and then what, what does that actually mean to everybody when they get it, how it rolls out, the confidence levels, until we have, you know, some type of normality that we can count on, then, you know, but we are having, you know, we do review at every board meeting um, and then and, and talk about it and what, you know, the options are. But right now, I think we're just, you know, like I said, we're cautiously optimistic right now. So, that, so that's how we can think about it once we once we cross that divide back to, to profitability, then uh, the dividends kind of back on the table. Mm. Yeah, that's certainly a metric to, to look at. Yep. All righty. Well, All right. thank you very much for taking the thank time you. to answer, and uh, talk to you guys next quarter. Okay. Have a good one, Brett. Care, Brett. Brett. You too. And there does appear to be no further questions at this time. I'll turn the call back over to the management team for any closing remarks. Thank you, Operator. As always, I want to thank our shareholders for continued interest and support. Our strategy of pursuing higher margin business is generating the desired results. And as we continue to transition the business, we are encouraged by the strong and growing interest in ARIA and UCAS offering. We do have a bright future. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, and this does conclude your program. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at any time.